Hello, my name is John Utz. I'm the Principal Engineer with Rex Nord's Industrial Chain and Conveyor Components Division in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. One of the most common problems I encounter when dealing with the customers is when they go to replace a chain, they need to identify what it is. So this video today is to help walk you through the process of how to identify a chain, which will be needed to eventually lead to a quote or placing an order. So the first thing that we want to ask you to do is to check your files. See if you have any information on the chain number, the model, uh, anything to do with it, descriptions, drawings. There's usually a lot of good information that comes with the machine, but unfortunately in many situations that information gets lost or displaced over the years. So we'll start with that, try to find the background information. If that's not available, the next thing we would go to is to look at the chain itself Check the sidebars to see if the base chain number is stamped on there. Rexnord tries to put that on most of the chain product we make, and that'll get us about 85% of the way to identifying what the chain is. So let me show you some examples. When you have a chain sample you're looking at and you're trying to find that number stamped on the sidebar, it may be a little difficult. Sometimes samples are new and clean and it'll be very obvious and you'll find it right away. Sometimes they've been in the application where it's dirty, it's corroded, and it's very hard to see. So as an example of these two pieces of chain, on this one, it's very easy to see. You can find it right away. It's almost every link. On this sample, it's been in service. It's very corroded. The part number is there on this inner sidebar, but it is so corroded it's almost impossible to see. The other thing is the Part number may be stamped at an infrequent sp spacing. On roller chain, for example, it may only be once every five or 10 feet. So you'll have to look a little bit, but try and find it. Use a wire brush, clean off the dirt, the rust, a rag, wipe it off, see if you can find that. Again, that base chain armor will get us about 85% of the way to figuring out what the chain is. The other thing that may help is to take photographs, both of the chain itself and the whole application. The photograph won't provide a good reference for dimensions, but it gives us perspective of what we're looking for and helps identify the, the type of chain, the style of the attachment, and application photos help us understand how it's used and will be important for things like attachment spacing. The thing I would caution you with is when you're taking photos, please don't use that as the way to transmit dimensional information. While they help build perspective, it's very difficult to extract dimensions from a photograph. As an example, let me show you what happens if we take a piece of chain and we'll use that classic approach that we've seen over the years where people lay their foot, lay it next to their foot and take a photograph. So here's a piece of chain, same chain, three different foot examples, and you can see the dramatic difference. When you're looking at the chain, if we can't find that base number, the next step is we have to resort to trying to measure it and identify it by dimensions. This is often difficult to do because there are many different variations of chain. The easiest way to do this is often to start with a catalog, uh, Rex Nord or some other. Find the base chain first that looks similar to your sample. We'll measure that, compare it, try to identify it, or at least provide the dimensions. And then we'll move to the attachment if the chain has one. When measuring a chain sample, we can use relatively simple tools. We can start with the basic tape measure, six inch machina scale, or what I would prefer would be a caliper, and ideally digital, but whatever you're comfortable with. So if you pick up the catalog, if we use this chain as an example, we would first go to a catalog page and try to identify the base chain. So in this case, we can find the chain that looks similar. What we want to do is actually use these sketches and the dimensional uh, layout as a template. So if you can photocopy this page or just replicate it and identify each column or the letters that are indicated and go through and take those measurements and lay it in or identify it. For example, the pin diameter is dimension A or whatever it is on your catalog. My caution is again that every catalog is a little different, so it's important to include this information as a key so we understand what dimensions are. So we'll start with the base chain, then we'll migrate next, try to find an attachment that matches. So in this case, we have this base chain as an example. You can find an illustration here that's very similar. We'll follow that as our template. So we go back to base chain. Again, we really want to work across, fill in as much of this as possible, uh, line by line. 
with the critical dimensions you usually start with chain pitch. That is, by definition, is the distance from the center of one pin to the center of the next pin. That can be a little difficult to measure if you want to hold up trying to find the center of the pin. But you can go to the front edge to front edge, back edge to back edge. It's just important that you do it the same way on both ends. So as a quick example, this chain I happen to know is six inch pitch. We'll get close. If I want to lay in, go center of pin to center of pin, and you're going to take your me measurement that way, right in the chart. Some of the other key dimensions I would emphasize is pin diameter. I don't want the head diameter or the tip. We want to get in the center if possible. In this sample, the pin is loose. We can measure out here. Same thing with your calipers. You can place it on here, take the reading. Chain width is one of the tricky ones. People will sometimes take a measurement and just say the chain is four inches wide. The problem with that is we don't know what measurement you took. So again, the catalog is the template that will help lead you. Follow the catalog dimensions. A common one would be across the inner link or block link. Same thing, take your caliber, open up, take your measurement. Next thing would be sidebar thickness and height. Caution would be sometimes the sidebars are different between inner and outer links, so check both. Sidebar width, pretty simply. Height could be a little more difficult to get to. Sidebar height. With these dimensions, that pretty well nails down what the plain chain might be. Again, follow the catalog template. Next, we'll move to the attachment. In this example, we grabbed a relatively common K2 type attachment. I will caution you, nomenclature varies a little from manufacturer to manufacturer. The K terminology is pretty common. What that K means is an attachment that's up at 90 degrees on both sides. Again, catalog will give you a basic reference. Once you identify the basic attachment, you have your catalog page. The key issue is to go through and identify the attachment hole pattern. Distance, what we call width pitch, going this direction or with parallel to direction of travel, and then a cross pitch. So again, the definition is based on center of hole to center of the hole. As a quick example, if we measure this one with pitch, you can take the caliper and try and find the centers. You can try and measure edge to edge. Or a neat little trick, if you take a, if you have digital calipers, you can measure the hole diameter. Zero out your reading. Now measure outside to outside, and that will give you the pitch of those attachment holes. In this case, about two and a half inches. You repeat the same thing going across, hole diameter. And then the last one on attachments that's sometimes missed is kind of center of the uh, pin up to the top of the attachment. So this is an example on a relatively simple chain. In our industry, particularly the engineering class chains, there's a great variation of attachments and a lot of special adaptations of those. Uh, you may not find a catalog sketch that's ideal. In that case, maybe the best example is to find something close or simply sketch it on a piece of paper and then give us those dimensions. Again, going back, photograph helps build perspective but please don't take that tape measure next to it and say, here's the chain pitch. That, that's not good enough for what we need. With that information, we can hopefully work with you in the catalogs to identify the product. The next step, once we identify what chain it is, we have to go back and build the background information that leads to the quote and order process. So that involves things like, if we know what that attachment is, we now need to know what the spacing is. From this sample, I can only tell you that the attachment is at least every second pitch or every second length, but it could actually be anything greater than that. So we need you to look at the application or larger piece and say, okay, does this attachment repeat every fourth, every sixth? Or you can do it by dimensions. Here the tape measure is fine. You can say, hey, at the center of this attachment, I go to the next one, it's four feet or whatever it is. That'll let us build the attachment spacing. The next piece, and probably the most important one on any chain that's made to order, is the quantity. 
It's very important on made order to have the quantity because that impacts your price. So please provide the quantity that you need, whether it's small or large or whatever, because it does play a factor in the price that you'll get. One of the last items I want to touch on is that many chains have special features. These are hard to identify because you don't know what you're looking for. Some of the more common ones I wanted to point out would be first, chains may have special coatings, platings, even possibly be stainless steel. There's really no easy way to look at a chain and know. This one requires talking to the customer or the user to try and find out what they know about the product. The problem is if you can't tell us, we don't know and we may not provide you the right feedback, ultimately maybe not even quoting the right chain. Some other ones as an example, this chain here has hard facing on it. These weld beads that are applied, that's for wear resistance and a highly abrasive application. This big chain here out of a reclaimer. If you looked on the end of the pin here, you'd see this recess and there's a funny fitting there. What that actually is, is a loop port to pump grease in through the center of the pin out to the roller. So as you look at a sample and observe it, look for the unusual things. Include that in the description. Uh, possibly we'll know a chain unique like this we might even come back and ask hey did it have a loop ported pin uh, but we might not know either uh, so those are some of the special features we need you to look for anything that's unique or unusual tell us about it we'd much rather have you provide too much information rather than not enough so to back up and summarize we want you to start with talking to the customer checking your files See if you have chain numbers, model numbers, possibly uh, descriptions, drawings, any of those things are better than trying to go down the route of looking at the sample. If you don't have any of that background information, let's go back, look for the chain number. Even this big sample has the chain number on it. That would get us very quickly to what it is. If we can't find a chain number or it's not on the chain you're looking at, then we have to go the dimensional route, use the catalog, take the measurements, submit that, get the background information, the attachment spacing, the quantities, the uh, any special packaging, anything like that, bring it to us. At the end of the day, if you say, hey, I'm just not comfortable with that, can I ship you the sample? It's always an option, but sometimes we can do it faster and quicker and and get you a better response by doing this other technique. At the end of the day, get what you can, contact us. We'll have the website listed here at the end of the video. Get the information to us and we'll see if we can help you out. Thank you. For more information, please visit rexnord.com or contact your local Rexnord representative. Be sure to subscribe to Rexnord's YouTube channel to stay up to date on all Rexnord video content.